This video provides basic information about Marine Johnson Machine Company dip chain multiple rip saws. Instructions and suggestions are provided in this video to ensure the proper installation, setup, safe operation, and maintenance of your rip saw. It is vital for safety and productivity concerns that machine operation and maintenance schedules be followed as outlined in the manual. It is equally important that personnel operating and or performing service on the machine are thoroughly knowledgeable with the equipment and safe machine operation procedures. Marine Johnson reserves the right to make changes and improvements incorporating them into machines as conditions warrant. The illustrations and specifications outlined in this video are not binding in detail. At Marine Johnson Machine Company, customer service is our top priority. We have a highly trained and knowledgeable staff of service technicians to help you. Contact Marine Johnson should any problems or questions arise regarding any Marine Johnson equipment. This video will cover design features, safety features, installation, saw sleeve setup, saw sleeve installation, maintenance and lubrication. The dip chain series is the standard of the industry and is available in arbor width capacities from 12 inch to a full 40 inches. All Marine Johnson dip chain multiple rip saws offer precision, high production, and glue joint accuracy. Marine Johnson high efficiency arbor motors are engineered to deliver high performance under the most grueling around the clock production schedules. Marine Johnson arbors can accommodate saw blades from 10 to 14 inches in diameter. Arbors are direct drive up to 75 horsepower and belt driven up to 150 horsepower. On direct arbor drive models, the saw arbor shaft is an integral part of the motor. It is specifically designed to eliminate spindle end play and run out. The heavy cast iron motor housing and all other cast components are produced in Marine Johnson's own foundry. Component manufacturing is performed on state-of-the-art CNC machining centers. The result is a saw arbor motor that will outperform, outlast, and provide a higher degree of precision over motors found on other rip saws. Marine Johnson rip saws offer the widest arbor capacity of any dip chain gang rip saw. In addition, most models are designed with the left hand side of the machine open. This will allow the operator to rip panels exceeding the width capacity of the arbor. Our non-marring friction feed bed is designed with extruded structural aluminum feed slats with replaceable steel-backed rubber inserts. The bed is carried by Marine Johnson's exclusive double V precision feed chains that dip at the saw line. This allows for infinite saw spacing without the fear of the feed bed making contact with the saw blade arrangement. The feed bed can be operated at variable feed rates from 30 to 150 feet per minute. Special feed rates to 225 feet per minute are available. The overhead idle press roll arrangement, ahead and behind the saws, secure the material being ripped to the feed bed. A full width spring loaded bed plate provides additional hold down pressure at the saw line to ensure straight cuts with glue joint accuracy. The control panel is mounted to the side of the machine for operator convenience and safety. A prepared saw sleeve can be changed in as little as five minutes or less minimizing downtime. An optional saw sleeve transport cart and setup stand are available to assist in the installation and removal of saw sleeves. Marine Johnson multiple rip saws are designed for high precision production that translates into lower labor costs and increased efficiency. Automatic in-feed conveyors integrated with rip optimizing systems will further decrease labor costs and increase productivity and lumber yield. 
Marine Johnson multiple rip saws are designed and manufactured to outlast and outperform all other rip saws on the market. If you are in the kitchen cabinet, furniture, millwork, wood component, lumber or other related industry, you can count on Marine Johnson's premier line of dip chain multiple rip saws to operate flawlessly for many years. With Marine Johnson's highly skilled customer service department only a phone call away, you can rest assured that you will receive a level of technical and customer support that is the benchmark other companies hope to achieve. The starter cabinet door is equipped with an interlocking switch that prevents the door from being opened with the main power on. The arbor access door is equipped with an interlocking switch that prevents the arbor from being turned on when the door is open. When the door is closed and the arbor is running, the arbor access door cannot be opened until the arbor has come to a complete stop. The low air pressure switch, located in the starter cabinet, automatically shuts down the machine when the air pressure falls below the required level. Two in-feed upper and one in-feed lower sets of anti-kickback fingers stretch the entire width capacity of the machine. There is also a set of outfeed anti-kickback fingers, designed to keep edgings upright, so they can be driven out of the machine. The heavy gauge steel guards enclose the feed bed, drive works, and all moving parts. Always wear a protective safety vest when operating this machine. Never wear loose clothing or jewelry. And never operate the machine without guards. Marine Johnson, in collaboration with the Wood Machinery Manufacturers Association, has produced a safety video. This video is available from Marine Johnson upon request. The installation process begins with a careful removal of the rip saw from the truck. Due to the fact that these rip saws are top heavy, it is important to guard against tipping. It is recommended that a forklift with a minimum capacity of 10,000 pounds be used and the machine be picked up from the motor side. We recommend a minimum 6 inch reinforced concrete floor for proper machine operation. Once the saw is in location, Mark the location of the anchor bolt holes on the concrete floor. Then move the machine, drill the anchor bolt holes using a concrete hammer drill. Drill all the holes, then move machine back into position. Place leveling plates under the leveling feet. Have the leveling bolts protrude out from the bottom of feet, one half to three quarter of an inch for leveling allowance. Using a machinist level, Rough level the machine using the leveling bolts. We recommend a stair at 98.8 level or equivalent. Next, pound in the anchor bolts to accommodate the heavy duty washer, flat washer, and nut. Tighten nuts to seat anchors in concrete, then recheck level and adjust where necessary. When installing the feed motor, it is extremely important that the mounting bolts be tightened in a staggered pattern to avoid breaking the mounting ears. Tighten bolts in the following sequence, number one and number three, number two and number four, working in a cross pattern until all bolts are tight. The feed motor utilizes a spring-loaded friction disc assembly, so proper installation is essential. Consult your manual for additional information. Once the feed motor is mounted, using the machine's wiring diagram as a reference, reconnect the electrical conduit. Connect the three wires to the motor by matching the numbers attached to the wires. Check all electrical connections in the motor junction box for loose connections. A fused main disconnect must be provided by the user. Make certain that your main disconnect complies with local and national electrical codes. Your Marine Johnson multiple rip saw requires only one electrical drop, one three-quarter inch compressed air drop, and three dust collection drops. 
we recommend that you install a T in the compressed air line for blowdown purposes. When installing the dust collection drops, keep in mind that the large diameter main dust pickup point requires a flex or slip fit type joint as it raises and lowers approximately 5 inches with the press roll housing. The infeed auxiliary dust hood and the lower feed bed pickup points can be piped solid. Consult your manual for the proper duct sizes, air collection CFM, and velocity requirements for your model. Once the feed motor, electrical, air and dust collection points have been connected, the next several steps will prepare you for powering up the machine. Open the arbor access door. Release the arbor brake by pushing the mechanical override button on the air valve and check that the arbor rotates freely. If your machine is equipped with a slip-off end bearing assembly, as shown here, the assembly must be securely in place before starting the arbor. Never run the machine without the slip-off end bearing in place and tightened. The arbor nut must not be installed in the machine at this time. Temporarily, raise the outfeed upper anti-kickback fingers with a 2x4 piece of wood. In the event that the feed motor is phased backward upon initial power-up, this piece of wood will prevent the anti-kickback fingers from damaging the feed bed. The oil mist nozzles are positioned up for transportation when leaving the factory and must be repositioned prior to startup. Open the access door on the side of the machine. Loosen the bolts on the bracket that holds the mist nozzle pipe. Slowly rotate the pipe until the dimples align between the bracket and the pipe. This will align the mist nozzles to their proper location. Close and latch the arbor access door. Failure to securely close the door will not allow the arbor to start. At this time, turn the power on and turn the air pressure on to the machine. Pull out all emergency stop buttons. Next, we are going to check for proper rotation of the arbor. Push and turn to lock the mechanical override button on the air valve that controls the arbor brake. This will disengage the brake and let the arbor freewheel to a stop, allowing the operator to check rotation. Since you cannot open the arbor access door until the arbor comes to a complete stop, check the arbor rotation through the motor fan housing. Looking at the fan, the arbor should rotate in a clockwise rotation. If this is correct, start the arbor motor and check the feed bed for proper rotation. Quickly, start stop feed motor and check rotation. If the arbor or feed bed is phased backwards, consult your manual for directions on rephasing the machine. Once the machine is properly phased, remove the piece of wood holding up the outfeed kickback fingers. Adjust the press rolls until the pointer and scale reads approximately one half inch. Adjust the arbor up until there is sufficient clearance between the bed plate and the arbor shaft. This will give clearance to install the saw sleeve setup. If your machine is equipped with powered press roll adjustment and power hoist, the arbor motor needs to be running to allow the up and down buttons to be active. Your saw blade diameter will determine how far you will need to raise the arbor motor. Shut down the machine. Disconnect the power and lockout. Always follow standard air and electrical lockout procedures. We are now ready to review the saw sleeve setup portion of the video. The first step is to build up a saw sleeve. Begin by mounting the sleeve stabilizer to a solid work surface in a vertical position. Damage to the saw sleeve may occur if the stabilizer is used in any position other than vertical. Cleanliness and close inspection during the sleeve setup procedure are extremely important. Failure to do so could result in poor cutting performance, arbor vibration, premature bearing failure, and increase the possibility of the saw blades welding themselves to the sleeve. Mount the saw sleeve to the sleeve stabilizer, rotating the sleeve 
until the driving collar engages the locking pin. When cleaning the sleeve and spacers for the very first time, take note that they are wrapped and coated with corrosion inhibitor. This coating must be removed with industrial solvent, such as mineral spirits, that leaves no film. During daily use, the same solvent can be used to prevent any buildup on the spacers and sleeves. Once the sleeves, spacers, and saw blades have been cleaned, check for nicks and burrs. These can be removed with fine emery paper. This preparation of the sleeve and spacers will reduce the likelihood of the spacers becoming stuck on the sleeve. Start the sleeve setup by installing the first saw or the first saw spacer depending on the setup desired. All saw blades must be matched in diameter by plus or minus one thirty-second of an inch and mounted on the saw sleeve in the correct direction. Consult your manual for a more in-depth instruction on the proper way to build up saw sleeves. Continue building the sleeve until the last saw spacer is flush with the end of the finished smooth diameter on the saw sleeve so the sleeve nut, when tightened, will securely clamp the setup. Install the sleeve nut and securely tighten it with the spanner wrench provided. A few good wraps on the spanner wrench with a dead blow hammer is recommended. Test the blades to see if they are tight by lightly striking the body of the blade with the spanner wrench. The blade will make a ringing sound if properly seated, as opposed to a dull thud if not tightened properly. After power to the machine is shut off and locked out, the saw sleeve is now ready to be mounted on the arbor. If your machine is equipped with an outboard bearing assembly, as in this video, begin by removing the assembly. First, engage arbor lock by pulling out on the spring-loaded pin. This will allow the fork-style lock to slide down and engage the slip-off bearing sleeve. Slowly rotate the arbor until the lock is in line with the sleeve. This will allow the arbor nut and outboard bearing sleeve clamp nut to be loosened. Once the arbor nut and clamp nut are loose, the outboard bearing mounting bolts can be loosened and the outboard bearing removed. Clean and wipe the arbor with solvent. Inspect the arbor and if any nicks or burrs are found, dress them with fine emery paper. Clean the arbor and lightly wipe it down with 10 weight non-detergent oil. Begin by installing the arbor sleeve pilot. Then slide the sleeve over the pilot and onto the arbor. The sleeve must slide freely on the arbor. Should any resistance be felt, do not force the sleeve onto the arbor. If resistance is felt, remove the sleeve and check both the sleeve and the arbor for any obstructions. As the sleeve slides on and nears the back of the arbor, slowly rotate the sleeve until the keyways engage completely with their arbor driving keys. Remove the arbor sleeve pilot. Install the arbor nut, hand tighten only at this time. Carefully install the outboard bearing assembly. Place one hand under the assembly and grip the side of the assembly with the other. With the assembly tilted out at the top, start the assembly onto the snout of the arbor shaft. Slowly tilt the assembly to an upright position and push gently with the hand that is gripping the bottom of the assembly. Do not push at the top of the assembly. Carefully slide the outboard bearing assembly fully onto the arbor shaft or until the mounting bolts are just at the back of the slot but are not influenced by the back of the slot when tightened. Tighten the two mounting bolts to secure the outboard bearing. 
Tighten the outboard bearing clamp nut with the wrench provided. Lastly, tighten the arbor nut. It is critical that this tightening sequence is maintained when installing the outboard bearing. First, tighten the mounting bolts. Second, clamp nut and third, tighten the arbor nut. Raise the arbor lock into its upper position. To do this, pull the spring-loaded pin and raise the lock until the pin snaps into the lock. This will prevent the lock from sliding down and contacting the outboard bearing sleeve while in operation. This spring-loaded pin serves a second purpose. In order to lower the arbor lock, the operator must pull out on the spring-loaded pin, releasing the lock so it can slide down to hold the sleeve for tightening and loosening the arbor nut and the outboard bearing clamp nut. When this lock is slid down and holding the arbor shaft, the spring-loaded pin is designed to stick out sufficiently so the arbor access door cannot be closed, thus preventing the arbor access door interlock switch from being made, disabling the arbor. Install the bed plate segments and secure by bolting the tie bar in place. Generally, each sleeve setup has its own bed plate. This method keeps the saw cuts in the bed plate at a minimum and allows for the maximum hold down on the material being ripped. The machine comes with a multiple piece wooden bed plates or a one piece phenolic is available as an option. To make sure the arbor rotates freely, temporarily defeat the arbor brake by pressing and holding down the manual air valve override button and rotate the saw arbor by hand. Close and latch the arbor access door. Start the arbor motor only. Do not start the feed motor until the arbor has been positioned properly. Start up your dust collection. Using the adjustment hand wheel for the press roll housing, raise the housing until the scale indicates one to two inches. This will allow the blades to start cutting through the upper wooden bed plate. Using the Arbor Adjust hand wheel, slowly lower and visually check the arbor position until the saw blades come within approximately one eighth of an inch of the feed slats. Depending on the diameter of the saw blades, the physical downstop may engage before the arbor is in position. Readjust the jam nuts to allow for the needed travel for the arbor to be in position. Once the arbor is in position, Tighten the jam nuts down to the tie bar. Remember, this setting is only good for the diameter of the saw blade currently being used. Do not have the feed bed running at this time. If the arbor is lowered too far, it will only cut into one rubber slat instead of all of them. Adjust the press roll assembly so that the scale is set to the thickness of the material that will be cut. Tighten the four arbor motor gib locks. Tighten the press roll housing lock. Start the feed motor and adjust the feed to the desired speed using the variable speed hand wheel located on the feed motor transmission assembly. The speed may be adjusted only with the feed motor running. You are now ready to run material. Marine Johnson gang rip saws require periodic preventative maintenance. Likewise, Marine Johnson gang rip saws are noted for their incredible durability in plants that carry out a conscientious preventative maintenance program. Your machine maintenance manual is an excellent guide for a preventative maintenance program. Your gang rip saw requires daily lubrication, cleaning, and inspection. It is recommended that daily cleaning and oiling the arbor shaft with each arbor change and blowing all of the sawdust off of the machine be performed with each eight hour shift. Special attention must be made to cleaning the anti-kickback fingers to ensure that the fingers do not become compacted with sawdust. Anti-kickback fingers must swing freely to be effective while cleaning the anti-kickback fingers, operators must inspect for worn, bent, or sticking fingers, 
and make corrections or repairs before operating the saw. Review the safety section in the manual for the recommended procedure for checking the anti-kickback fingers for wear. Using the enclosed cardboard test strip, hold the test strip flat against the table and insert under the first row of anti-kickback fingers. If you can pull the cardboard without puncturing the top layer of paper, your anti-kickback fingers are worn and need to be replaced. Do not oil the anti-kickback fingers. Operators must also complete a brief walk-around inspection of the machine prior to each operation to detect any obvious damage or defects in the machine. This can be done while the saw is being blown down, inside and out. Your Ripsaw's feed chains are lubricated by a mist lube oiling system. Each week, the mist oil nozzles must be checked for oil mist output and proper aim to ensure that the feed chains are in fact being lubricated. Consult your owner's manual or Marine Johnson for the proper procedures involved. The entire machine must be greased every 400 running hours. Your Marine Johnson machine is equipped with an hour meter to help you carry out your preventative maintenance program in a timely fashion. There is a lubrication chart located on the machine's electrical cabinet to assist you in finding the various points of lubrication. Caution! The amount of grease that the arbor bearings and outboard bearings receive is critical. These are high-speed bearings that must not be over-greased. Over-greasing will shorten the bearing's service life. Inside the electrical cabinet is a current sensor that is used to monitor normal current draw on the feed motor. If this current climbs above its set level, it will trip out and shut off the feed drive motor. If a jam should occur when running material, locate the reason and take corrective measures. The current sensor will reset itself automatically. Also, located in the electrical cabinet is a zero speed switch. This switch monitors arbor rotation and controls an air valve that operates an air cylinder that locks and unlocks the arbor access door. The arbor zero speed detection system will not allow entrance to the saw setup area while the arbor is still rotating, even after it has been turned off. The feed drive gearbox must be checked for proper quantity of gear lube at 400 hour intervals. Changing of the gear lube must take place every two years or 10,000 running hours. Consult your owner's manual for proper procedures and recommended types of gear lube. A diligent and proactive maintenance regimen will assist in many years of trouble-free production and glue joint ripping from your Marine Johnson dip chain rip saw.